it's time for us with Mr. Thomas. Let's go! Here's chapter 11, lesson number 3, Applications of Addition Formulae. So the last couple of lessons we've been looking at cos A plus or minus B and the same with sin plus or minus B. What we're going to do now is try some of the A-level questions, so some of the harder problems. Example 1. Show that sine ACB is equal to 2 root 5 plus 2 root 2 over 3 root 6. Now for these problems we are going to be using the addition of formulae, so these are the uh, formulas we've been looking at for the last couple of lessons. So we're now going to apply these. So first of all we're thinking, right, well we've got this triangle here, ABC, and it's been split into two right angled triangles with this line CD. We know the length of CD is 2, we know the length of AD is root 5, and we know the length of BD is root 2. What we're asked to do is to work out sine ACB, or really just prove it's equal to this fraction here. So ACB is going to be going from A to C to B, so it's going to be looking at this angle. Really, to work this out, what we want to do is we're wanting to split it up, and it has already been split here with this line CD. So now we've got this angle here, we've got the ACD, and we've also got the angle DCB. So we've also got this angle. So because we've now got the two angles that make up ACB, let's just rename them. So let's call angle ACD P, and let's call DCB Q. So from here, sine ACB is going to be the same as sine P plus Q. So we can write down that sine P plus Q. And whenever we get Q, well, Q, well, Q, well, we are going to the addition formulae, and we know that sine A plus B, or P plus Q, can be written as sine A cos B plus cos A sine B, but again, replacing the A and the B with P and Q. So doing that will give us this. From there then, we are wanting to sub in values for sine P and cos Q and so on. So sine P will take the triangle at the top, that is P. Sine P is gonna be your opposite over hypotenuse, so that'll be root five over, uh-oh. How do we work out the hypotenuse? Help us out, Grace, what do we do? Good, we can use Pythagoras to work out the length of AC. So working out AC, you know that is just going to be root 5 squared plus 2 squared. You're going to end up with 9, and then you can square root it to get the length of AC. From there, you would have to do the exact same thing with the triangle just at the bottom. So this length BC, well BC squared is going to be equal to, and in this case, the two shorter sides there are going to be the 2 and the root 2. So 2 squared plus root 2 squared, that's going to give you 6 then BC will be the square root of 6. Don't write it as a decimal, leave it as an exact value, so you've got that third there. From there, you can now sub in values into sine P cos Q and cos P sine Q. So doing that, you will end up with sine P, as we said, was the opposite over hypotenuse, so that's root 5 over 3. Cos Q is going to be your adjacent over hypotenuse, so this is the other triangle, so Q is going to be uh, this triangle at the bottom, so you've got 2 over root 6. Cos P, cos is going to be your adjacent over hypotenuse, so 2 over 3. And sine Q, sine will be your opposite over hypotenuse, so root 2 over root 6. From there, you've got the fractions, just multiply the numerators, multiply the denominators, so you end up with these two fractions. You are wanting to add them, because the denominator is the same, you can add the numerators, and doing that will give us 2 root 5 plus 2 root 2, over 3 root 6. And have we answered the question? It wasn't really a question, but yes, we have shown that sine ACB is equal to that. That is the answer that we are getting. Woo! Example 2. Prove that tan 3A plus tan A is equal to sine 4A over cos 3A cos A. What? How on earth are you going to be doing this? Help us out. What would you do, Adam? Good. Well, the first thing you want to look at is, well, you've got tan. And really, in our answer, we're wanting to get down to something with sine and cos in it. So we're wanting to swap tan, first of all, with something in terms of sine and cos. Do you remember what it is, Adam? Good. If you think back to your national five, tan x is equal to sine x over cos x. Which means, then, that tan 3a is going to be equal to sine 3a over cos 
3a. And then we're wanting to add on, and again, tan a is going to be equal to sine a over cos a. So that's what we end up with. From there, we end up with these two fractions. If you look at our answer, we just have one fraction. So let's add these fractions together. To do that, though, to add fractions, you need the same denominator. So taking the sine 3a over cos 3a, we need the denominator to be cos 3a cos a. So really what we're missing from that is a cos a. So let's multiply the numerator and denominator by cos a over cos a. With this fraction here, sine a over cos a, let's take that fraction. And again, you're wanting the denominator to be cos 3a cos a. So we're missing a cos 3a. So with that one, you multiply the numerator and denominator by a cos 3a. Doing that, you would end up with this. So we end up with sine 3a over cos a over cos 3a cos a plus, and then you get this fraction here. From there, the denominators are now the same. So what do you do with the numerators? Good, you would just add them. So if you add them, you end up with sine 3a cos a plus cos 3a sine a. Where do you go from there then, Iman? Yeah, look at the formulas at the top of the page. You've got a sine cos cos sine, sine cos a plus b, or sine 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 a minus b that you want to swap that with then. Because we've got a plus in the middle, we know we're going to swap that with sine a plus b. In this case though, really we're swapping the a and the b with 3a and a. So you can rewrite this as sine 3a plus a. And from there, taking it one stage further, if you look at what is in the brackets, if you have 3a and you add one more a, we have 4a. And the denominator will remain the same. So that is as proved that tan 3a plus a is equal to sine 4a over cos 3a cos a. Next example. Example 3. For the diagram opposite, show that cos bad equals 6 minus root 35 over 12. So with this diagram here, what do you want to do first of all? Well, if you think about it, you're wanting cos bad. So it's b to a to d. So it's going to be this angle here. So let's call these uh, angles. We're splitting this up. So we've got this angle and this angle. We need to call them something. So let's just call them x and y. So say BAC is going to be angle X and CAD is going to be angle Y. What you need to do after that though, is you're wanting to think, right, well, I need to work out the length of the missing sides. So this length CA, you would have to work out. So you've got this right angle triangle here with your root seven and your three. So you can use Pythagoras to work out the length of that side. So root 7 squared plus 3 squared is going to be 16. Square root that, and you know the length of CA is going to be 4. With the length along the bottom, again, you've got another right angle triangle. So if you know this side is 4, and you know this side is root 20, again, you can use Pythagoras to work out AD, or DA. Doing that, and you will end up with 6 units. So we need to think we're splitting this up into the two angles, and we'd have to work out these missing sides. From there, we are wanting to show that BAD equals a 6 minus root 35 over 12. So we have cos BAD, who's bad? To get that, what we're doing is we're thinking cos BAD is going to be this angle X plus this angle Y. So it's really going to be cos X plus Y. Once we have it in the form cos x plus y, we're thinking about the addition formulae. So cos a plus b is cos cos sine sine, and we're going to be subtracting. So replace the a and the b with x and y in the formula, and you will end up with this. From there, cos x will be your adjacent over hypotenuse, so that will be 3 over 4. We're multiplying that by cos y, so looking at this other triangle, cos y will be your adjacent over hypotenuse, which is 4 over 6. You're taking away sine x, sine is your opposite over hypotenuse, so root 7 over 4, and you multiply that by sine y, so root 20 over 6. Multiply the numerators, multiply the denominators, and you will end up with 
well over 24, minus root 140 over 12. From there, denominators are the same, so just subtract the numerators. So we'd have 12 take away the square root of 140. Root 140, though, you could split up. You could simplify. You could split that to become root 4 times root 35. And the square root of 4 is 2. So you'd have 2 root 35. From there, you could take out 2 as a common factor in the top. And then from there, you can divide the top and the bottom by 2 giving you 6 minus root 35 over 12, which we were asked to show. Next example. Example 4. Find the exact value of sine p plus q. Here we know the point, here we know the point A, which is 6, 8, and we know the point B, which is 12, negative 5. So p is going to be the angle between the x-axis and this line going from the origin to A and Q is between OB and again this X axis. So the first thing you want to think for this one is, well, if you've got the coordinate A, 6, 8, what that means is you went along 6 units and up 8 units. So we're kind of drawing in this right angled triangle. Q well, this angle here is formed between the x-axis and the line between the origin and this point B. Point B is 12, negative 5. So you came along 12 units, and negative 5 means you went down 5 units. So again, you get another right-angled triangle. Once you have these two right-angled triangles, you're best working out the missing sides. So to work out the length of OA, you can again use Pythagoras. So you've got 6 squared plus 8 squared, and then square root it, so that becomes 10 units. And to work out OB, you've got 12 squared plus 5 squared, and then square root it, so that becomes 13. Once you know that, then to work out the size of angle, uh, sorry, work out the size of sine P plus Q, well that is going to be with your addition formulae. So sine p plus q, you can expand that to sine cos, cos sine, and with keep the plus, just the same, and then replace sine p with 8 over 10. Replace cos q with 12 over 13, you've got add. Replace cos p with 6 over 10, and replace sine q with 5 over 13. From there, multiply the numerators and denominators, so you get the two fractions. The denominator is the same in both, so you can add the numerators, you end up with 126 over 130, but you can simplify that because they both divide by two, and you end up with 63 over 65. And that will be your exact value of sine p plus q. Try some of these questions. They are obviously the harder problems. This is when you're, where you are having to apply the addition formulae. Give it a shot, and best of luck. Bye.